You Leave Your Coffin by Gabrielle Commissar. The mahogany lid opens with ease before sloughing off its hinges entirely and plummeting into a dark crevasse. Your coffin sits just on the precipice. Luck has always been your reluctant companion. You move to your feet with such grace, best beloved. You are a dancer in well-worn slippers. The chains around your ribs and the bangles on your wrists sing in a twinkling chorus as you extricate yourself from your coffin. Your jeweled eyes gleam in the sunless light of the strange sleeping chamber. You find yourself in a vast, bioluminescent mushroom garden. Little streams of water trickle between the massive morals, curving upward towards a brighter clearing. In the hollow where your nose once sat, the pungent aroma of the fungi still finds purchase. The twin caverns of your skull where ear cartilage once blossomed somehow relate you to a distant chittering, a flapping of wings, and the sounds of a fire starting. Unabated curiosity guides you to the top of the mushroom garden, where the steep incline levels out and tufts of strange weed grow out of the mud. There, seated on some toadstools, two beetles and a slug share a fire with a kettle on. It would be the perfect place to tell the story if any of them were talking, but all their stocks are fixed on you. One of the beetles stands to his feet, his armor clanking as his hand grips the hilt of his sword. The other drops a bowl of something orange and pungent, scrambling for a crossbow by his feet. It's all so needlessly dramatic. They do not know you, best beloved. They do not love you the way we do, but they could. The beetles chitter angrily. The one with the broadsword points to you, then further up the hill to a broken wooden barrier. Perhaps it was meant to seal his mushroom garden, but something burst through the makeshift wall, propelled enough to carve a trench through the garden. You can see its trail winding down, down, toward your coffin. Some time before it corroded into sponge, your coffin swung like a battering ram into this garden and almost off the edge of the cliff. You make this connection just as the other beetle finds his footing and loads a bolt into his crossbow with a menacing click. Then, the slug raises his robed hand. The sound that comes out of him is deep and calm. If the property of snot could console the bereaved, tend to the sick, and spiritually lead a village, best beloved, it would sound not unlike this slug, though you know not what he says. The two armed beetles hiss at his deep warbles and burbles before lowering their weapons and shuffling indignantly back to their seats. His stalks, which have never left you, blink one after the other. He gives you what you can best approximate as a nod before patting the empty toadstool beside him and gesturing to the kettle. You always were so popular, beloved. It is right and good that moments after you arrive on the scene, people should offer you tea. You remember liking tea. But curiosity leads you out of your coffin, and now it pulls you tantalizingly toward the hole in the mushroom garden. Is there time for tea when you have so many questions? Your very existence, as undeniable and glorious as it is, remains a mystery. Would you like to know where you came from? Does each step forward terrify you, or does the bitter tang of unknowing drive you forward? Are you thirsty for tea, best beloved, or hungry for knowledge? Do we have tea with a slug and other bugs? Or do we exit through the hole our coffin made? <laughs>